Punching, stepping, punching. Stepping back, bum, bum. Them short steps is what's going to always keep you in the position to be able to throw them punches. I've got 28 years of boxing experience. 17 of them years were competitive where I had 106 fights, won an Olympic bronze medal, seven national titles, a European gold medal. And on this video, I'm gonna talk all about my experience with footwork. My footwork was what helped me have the success in boxing. And I'm gonna give you some practical things that you can do the next time you're in the gym to be able to master the most important thing in boxing, which is your feet. Because if you haven't got good feet, you can't get in range to land punches. You can't get out of danger when someone's attacking you. You can't pivot and throw some good, hard, solid punches that you need to do when you're in uncomfortable situations. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is the width of your boxing stance. Because if your feet are too close together here, and you've got this narrow boxing stance, this makes it really hard for you to move fast in either direction. Some fighters like to have their feet shoulder width apart here. Other fighters like me, I like to have my feet a little bit wider here. Now, let's talk about each one of them. First is when you've got your feet shoulder width apart. Yeah, this is good. As long as you're keeping your feet shoulder width apart when you're moving forwards, backwards, side to side. What people tend to do is when they're moving, they'll bring their feet together. If you bring your feet together, you can't throw punches. So the best thing to do is when you're moving is keeping your feet apart, taking little steps. Yeah, I've got my hands down here, but I'm just showing you my feet. I'm taking little steps, moving forwards, backwards, side to side. Now, when I take little steps like this, this is always putting me in the position to throw a punch. The second I bring my feet together, I can't throw a punch. And if I get hit in this position, I'm off balance and I could fall over. So when you're on the bag in shadow boxing, sparring on the mitts, focus on smaller movements and keeping your feet apart all the time. Now, even when you're on the bag and someone is not in front of you, you still want to do this because you want to get in good habits of doing it. It's common for people to be on the bag, they'll throw the punches, then they'll come back and they'll bring their feet together and they're here and they're taking a little rest. If you've been in the boxing gym, you've seen this so many times. You've probably done it yourself, where you, where you throw the punches, then you're back here, and then you're back in your boxing stance. Get out of that habit, because that will only transfer into the ring, or even if you're not even planning on getting into the ring, that will only transfer to you being in bad habits for longer. And when you are in a bad habit, it takes way, way longer to get out of that bad habit. Now, if you're training on your own, you should video yourself and watch yourself to make sure you're not doing this. If you're in a gym with a trainer, there's a good chance the trainer misses this. Because often what happens is you'll be in a gym with a trainer who's got 20 other boxes or even 10 other boxes. So, and what tends to happen is when the trainer comes up next to you, you start throwing harder punches, faster punches, doing things correctly. It's times when the trainer's not watching you or you might be tired when you want to be making sure you're staying in them good habits because you'll soon fall into bad habits even when you're fresh at the beginning of the session. So make sure you're never bringing your feet together. Now, let's move on to the other stance, what I said I liked, where my feet is wider apart here. Why do I like this stance? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first reason is, if my feet's wide apart here, I feel like I've got that solid base, and I can really rotate and smash in hard punches, because I've got that solid base, great balance, and smashed in them punches. Now, another reason why I like this is, if I've got my feet wide apart, I can sometimes drop bait punches from someone else. Now, a drop bait is where I might lean forward and drop my lead hand like this. If someone's in front of you and they're dropping their lead hand like this, the chances are you're gonna try and throw an overhand right, right? That's what you should do. But I'm baiting that from you. I know that you're gonna do that. And I'm confident in the speed of my feet that I can simply get out of the way. So because I've got the weight on the ball of my front foot there, I can simply push 
off that front foot, move back, and then come back with counter punches. And that's what I used to love to do. I'd be here, I'll drop here, I'll drop that hand, thinking he's going to throw that over, overhand right and move forward. As soon as he does that, I'm stepping back, bum, bum, and countering with my punches right there. This is a way more advanced thing to do, the drop beating, but I'm just talking about footwork, keeping them wide feet and keeping that solid base. But I recommend you do what's comfortable for you right now, as long as you are developing good habits all the time. So now you've got your stance sorted, moving around, keeping your feet apart, doing what's good for you. Let's talk about the next thing, which is moving and punching at the same time. See, in boxing, we've got to move and punch at the same time because the person that wouldn't just be standing in front of us, letting us hit them, when we throw them punches, they're going to move. And if we move forward without throwing punches, they're going to move again or they're going to punch us. So we need to get in the habits of being able to move and punch at the same time. Now, one thing you can do to practice this on a heavy bag is let the heavy bag swing like this. See, it's swinging backwards and forwards. What I'm going to do before I start moving and punching, I'm just going to get used to moving. I'm going to be keeping in my range of the bag there. This is great to get in the good habits of moving. Like I said on the last tip about keeping your feet apart, I can do this here, keeping in that range. I don't want to let, obviously let the bag hit me or I don't want to you know, get too far away from the bag here where I'm out of range all the time. I'm going to try and stay in range all the time, in range for me to hit the bag. So again, I'm here and the bag's swinging. I'm in range where I can throw the punches. And because I'm doing the little steps with my feet, I can throw the punches at any time I want. So I'm here. See, I can punch because I'm moving. Now I'm moving and punching. That was just an example. I don't want you to do that right now. I'm going to teach you exactly how to move and punch as the bag's swinging. But I just want to say, if you do bring your feet together and you switch off and the bag hits you, you could be... <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu break fall. <laughs> you could fall over like that. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've been in boxing gym since I was 10 years old. Now, 39 years old. I've never ever seen anyone get knocked over by a bag. So, that will not happen. Just wanted to show you me Jiu-Jitsu break fall. <laughs> So, back to punching and moving. When you're throwing punches, as you're moving your feet, you want to step and punch at the same time. So if I'm stepping with my left foot, I want to throw my left hand. If I'm stepping with my right foot, I want to throw my right hand. Again, keeping my steps very small. So now I'm stepping, I'm punching forwards. Same thing going back, stepping, punching, going back. Now we can do that on the bag. So it's swinging here. Now I'm stepping, punching, stepping punching. The punches and the steps are going at the same time. Now, just one thing I want to say there is, if you go to a boxing gym that's busy, and you just start swinging the bag like this, and then you're like, hey, hey, mate, you're going to look stupid. Don't do that. Make sure the boxing gym isn't full, and if there is people around you, make sure you've got enough space where you're not going to be throwing the bag and it's going to be hitting the guy next to you because you will look like a bit of a dick. And don't say, well, I seen Tony Jeffries' video and Tony Jeffries, the YouTube guy, he told me to swing the bag and move and punch at the same time. So blame him, not me. <laughs> no, mate, you've been warned. Don't be swinging the bag around like that. It's absolutely crazy in a busy gym. But if the gym is not busy or you're training on your own, not in a gym, yes, by all means, let this guy swing and then get used to moving and punching at the same time. Now, as you notice there, I'm talking as I'm punching. Why am I doing that? Well, because I'm relaxed. If you're holding your breath, uh, 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 that's another thing that's going to slow down your feet. It's going to slow down your punches. So make sure you're relaxed as you're doing this. Now, that is moving forwards and backwards. But what about moving side to side? Well, we can do this as well. When you're moving side to side, whether you're on a bag, shadow boxing, in the ring, it's important that when you're doing this, again, you're keeping your feet apart. And when you're moving to your left, you always want to move which foot first? 
Can you think? Do you know which foot am I moving first? Moving to my left? The left foot, right? Because what happens if I move my right foot? Yeah, we're in this position. Do you want to be in this position? Do you want to be boxing in this position here? Definitely not, mate. So what we're going to do is move the left, left foot first, followed by your right foot. Again, them short little steps. Them short steps is what's going to always keep you in the position to be able to throw them punches. Now, a big thing is when you're moving forwards and backwards is landing on the balls of your foot. In life, since we learned to walk when we were one years old, we walk like this. Heel toe, heel toe. So we've been developing bad habits since we were one years old because we're walking our heels toe. Now, in boxing, you can't do this. You can't step forward on your heel. Why? Because if someone attacks us in this position, then what will happen is we've got to push off our heel. Compared to the other, land on your toe, we can push off much faster. So you always want to get into the habits of landing on the balls of your foot. No matter whether you're moving forwards, backwards, moving to your left, moving to your right. Again, this is only going to keep you in the position to be able to throw them punches. Throw them punches hard, throw them punches fast. Like I mentioned, when the bag's moving and you're stepping and punching, I'm not stepping and punching on my heel like this. I'm stepping and punching on the ball of my foot like this. So getting into the habit of always moving forwards, backwards, side to side on the balls of your foot is another absolute game changer to get into good habits for boxing footwork. Now, before I give you an Olympic boxing drill that you can do on the bag that's going to help improve your footwork, let's have a little recap of the things that we've just went over. We talked about keeping your feet apart when you're moving forwards and backwards. We spoke about when you're punching and moving, this punch and the foot lands at the same time. We spoke about moving left, always left foot first, moving right, always right foot first. We spoke about being on the balls of your feet when you are moving. And this is just a tiny fraction of the things that you can do to improve your footwork. It's just a tiny, tiny fraction of things that you can do to get better at boxing. There is a huge catalogue of different things that you can do to get better at boxing. Like over 120 different things that you can work on. And guess what I've just done? I've created a course called Master Boxing where I dive deep on the little details to help you perfect your boxing to help you be the very best version of yourself you can be. If you scan here, it'll take you through to the Master Boxing online course. And I tell you what, my friend, this is an absolute game changer. If you really want to improve your boxing, on this course, you're not just going to watch videos, you're going to actually watch the videos, answer questions about each video so it sticks into your mind, and then you will practice it, perfect it, and it'll help you get into great habits to help you be the best boxer that you can possibly be. You can go to TonyJeffries.com, scan here, or the link is below. And I'm telling you, mate, this is the best thing that I've ever created, other than me three kids, that is. <laughs> now, this Olympic footwork drill is an absolute game changer. When we used to do this, I couldn't stand it because it was so hard. I didn't realize the habits that I was developing by doing this. And if you didn't know, I was on the same Great Britain boxing team as Amir Khan, James DeGill, David Price, Anthony Joshua, and so on. We all went through the same sort of program to help us develop as boxers. And it was the feet that helped us have the success. And this boxing drill is a phase attack where you're going to move into range, throw the punches, move out of range with good form, for defense, move back into range and throw good punches. Example, if this bag is my opponent, I'm standing here, I'm out of range. I can't hit the bag, the bag can't hit me. Well, obviously the bag can't hit me, it's got no arms. But if it was an opponent, you know what I'm saying, we're out of range. What I'm going to do, I'm going to step into range and throw two punches, like we spoke about, stepping and punching at the same time. Then I've got to visualize an attack coming from this guy here. Then I'm going to step out of range to defend. Then I'm going to counter that attack with another two punches. And that is just a one phase attack. I'm going to show you that one. Then I'll show you the two phase and a three phase attack as well. So I'm out of range here. I'm going to step in with the one, two, step out, step back in with another one, two. That is my one phase attack. 
But now let's just talk about that if I'm in with a high level boxer who, after I've countered his punch, he wants to counter my counter punch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to step in with a one, two, step out for defense, step in with a one, two, step out for defense, step in with a one, two. And it'll look like this. <coughs> That's a three fears attack right there. And there's one big common mistake I see when I teach this to people is they'll do this. Ba -ba. Ba -ba. They'll bring one foot back. You can't just bring one foot back because you're still in range. You've got to bring your full body out of range. So I'm going to step in to range, step out of range, step into range, step out of range, step into range. Like that, in, out, in, out. And when you do this, you'll really feel your heart rate elevate through the roof. But also, it's going to be a great footwork drill for you to work on. Now, this is part one of this footwork drill video. I'm going to be doing part two very soon. So make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on so you don't miss another one. But if you're serious about leveling up in boxing, if you click here, it'll take you through to my master boxing video package course.